What are those little squishmallows that people like? A lot of people like those. They remind me of Funko Pops, but they're not as useless. They yeah, at least yeah. serve a purpose. It. You can cuddle it. You can it's cuddle warm. it. Yeah. I don't know what this is. They're like these creatures, these like obese creatures that people cuddle. Oh, that's Aww. such a weird way to Wait, describe what are they them. Am I wrong though? What are they called? I, they're spherical. Squishmallow. They're spherical. Yeah, they're they're not healthy. They're nobody <laughs> nobody goes, I want the body of a squishmallow. <laughs> oh, they are cute. <laughs> they are cute. Oh, I would have been all Please over this as a kid. Misery. <laughs> Please kill me. No matter how hard I'm squished, I never die. <laughs> Squishmallow is like the inevitable result of like all the breeding of dogs we're doing. Like a pug is going to be a Squishmallow. We're, yeah, we're two iterations of pugs away from it's, Squishmallows yeah. rolling around. Aww, that'd be so cute. Hi, everybody. Welcome to AITA <laughs> Pod. I'm Danny Vega, joined by Shannon D and Jake Davis. Hello. Hi. Um, we did get a pretty uh, well-written comment here, and it's uh, it's going to get us going about the driving instructor. Um, so this was, just to sum it up quickly, this woman took a driving instructor class, and it was a great class. He killed it. But at one point, he admitted that, like, gay people, uh, he thinks all gay people are going to hell. What, what did he well, say exactly? He, he, like, what he asked her what she thought about the homosexual agenda. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. he was a Jehovah's Witness. And he thinks that everyone that doesn't believe in that is going to hell. I, and I would actually specify he specifically says how exci- how much he looks forward to God sending all oh, of the homosexuals right. to burn in hell. Uh, no, no. I don't think that's what he said. Um, I got to fact check that did one. Did he say JD. homosexuals? No, I, he I don't said, think he did. I think he just said, what do you think about the homosexual I'm, agenda? And I, and I'm, I, I don't know about the looking forward part. I I'm don't pretty sure that. he expressed specific excitement about God burning his enemies alive. Uh, I don't right. Think I, so. If he did say that, I don't think it was specific. Oh, what he said was, how he cannot wait for God to destroy the world and all the sinners to be wiped off. Okay, so still sinners very much excited about and his and enemies. Homosexuals in and his in mind. the context of bringing up the gay agenda, we all know which way he was leaning. So anyway, you guys get it. He didn't say a slur or anything, but he said stuff that I think is pretty... No, he just wished for their painful deaths no. and eternal torment. He, yes, he says he looks forward to the sinners being wiped off. He was yeah. being a bigot. Oh, yeah. he. It was he, ugly. I'm he sure he's excited about them to be cleaned by Windex. That's sure. what wiped okay. off okay. meant for him. So you guys get it. <laughs> there was some ambiguity, but like he didn't say any slurs, but it was definitely that we know hateful of. in ideation. So this person commented. Most people are bad online reviewers, meaning they're bad at making accurate reviews of a place person experience. They often have one small thing they don't like when the rest of their experience was good and then opt for a one star because they cannot remove their emotion from it. It cannot make fair and subjective assessments. This person uh, misused subjective. They mean objective, but they made the mistake several times, which is kind of funny. The driving instructor was inappropriate. Yes, but the OP obviously felt this man was harmless, not dangerous, and they didn't want a different instructor otherwise they could have done so. The reviewer here, OP, did actually a good job of reviewing them as a teacher because they left five stars. They were in no way obligated to share anything else unless they wanted to, and if they wanted to ding them and share that, then maybe four stars. (laughs) Or even give them five stars. But right in the review mentioning that he sometimes chats about inappropriate topics. Hmm, interesting. His religion and opinions on that doesn't mean he would do harm to someone who disagrees with him. Jehovah's have some messed up beliefs, sure, but most of them are good, just like most people who are involved in organized religions. And giving him a one-star review is being the asshole. A one-star review would mean if on top of him sharing his beliefs and opinions and trying to get her to join the JW, also sucking at his job, not helping them to learn, yell at them, making them cry, etc. Carl with a K deserves to get a bad review, yes. <laughs> I love the shout out. The more privileged thing here is to give this man a one-star review when he didn't deserve it, which in turn affects his livelihood. Sounds way more like white privilege than sticking your feet on the back of someone's armrest. Oh, shit. Oh, damn, OP, you're obviously... Uh, you're obviously a listener. We'd love to see it. <laughs> Four or three stars at the least. The instructor's opinions are not what we agree with, but they are his opinions. And again, he was inappropriate in sharing them in a professional setting. That was his biggest crime, but that does not make him dangerous. Giving him a one-star review is like me giving your podcast a one-star review because I don't agree with everything you say, even though I still enjoy listening. Winky face. Well, you are more mature than the many one-star reviews I have received. Yes. Please, five stars, y'all. Yeah, we fell under four recently on Spotify. So oh, anyway. It's dang. like 3.9. 
there's a yeah something like that so um, um, well actually going off of this remember after we had recorded and we all went to get dinner and I was talking about where I was coming from with like giving the two or three star review yeah and because I was sort of saying a similar thing to what this uh, reviewer was saying in the beginning where for example, sometimes I go online and I look at um, the reviews of a sweater I want to buy. And I am looking at the reviews and the one star is like, I love the sweater. It's absolutely perfect. Everything about it is amazing. The fit is great. It feels mm -hmm. amazing. But the shipping just took a lot longer than I expected. One star. Right. So I, which sucks for people looking at the products because they want to know if the product is good or not. So you're exactly. kind of making a confusing customer experience. For exactly. Them. Mm -hmm. So I, I get frustrated with reviews a lot because it's like either people do five stars or one star, but it's like, okay, maybe let's in the scenario I gave, like give it an appropriate amount of stars. You love the product, but like the customer service wasn't amazing say. So I think, um, I mean, this is a lot more of a serious situation because you can, you know, he, he had a lot of beliefs that are harmful towards others, but that's sort of where I was coming from when I said to give like a two star review, which I think would actually kind of be fair. Um, so uh, that, yeah, I, uh, I'll do respect OP appreciate you writing in, but yeah, it's easy to say that when you're not somebody that is words of fact. Right. Mm -hmm. Like it's it is. Yeah. This dude's I don't I don't care how much like it doesn't bother you potentially about somebody saying some these are this is dangerous talk. And like, look, I've I have grown up with a lot of people involved in some very fringe. One of my best friends growing up is family who's in Scientology, another close friend, family's in Jehovah's mm -hmm. Witness. And you know something that I found very consistent about both of those groups, abusive fucking households. And these like these concepts, these just like, oh, it's just a way that somebody, oh, he just has certain beliefs. And yeah, he just wants all of the people in the world that he views as sinners to burn in hell. Right. That yeah, it can really open up some dangerous fucking ways of thinking. And I'm glad that you can see it as privilege to give somebody a one star review when you're trying to signal to somebody who could be in danger in the car of this man. Because frankly, I don't think we saw any evidence that they wouldn't be he, he all we heard about his opinion on gay people was how much how excited he is that they're all gonna burn in hell with the rest of the sinners yeah i mm. i think we're yeah i think jake and i, I think jake goes a little farther than me labeling this man dangerous op you labeled them you claim that o, op felt that they were harmless so i split the difference here and say yeah, this he is, is harmless if harmful. you're not gay full he's definitely harmful. harmful and i do believe that certain belief systems are harmful okay mm -hmm. so let's talk about if they were an atheist which is an offensive belief to someone if if somebody did this and they were an atheist and somebody got offended and left one star i would say well you were offended by this because you believe in god and those are your personal beliefs but they are mm -hmm. not actually advocating for any kind of harm right. on anyone they're not saying that some people are going to hell or will suffer eternally or that people's lives are worse than any they simply denied the existence of a higher power which you believe in and honestly i think god will be okay Right. Like yeah. there's no victim there. Right. So <laughs> yeah, I, I think this is a reality is real thing where it's like, OK, yeah, this guy, I, I'm not going to call him dangerous. I think that's too far. But I do believe that these beliefs are harmful and that the Jehovah Witness is the the beliefs are inherently harmful. So what? how does that harm manifest? Well, concretely, like they almost tried to flip gay marriage. Now we're in a, you know, a society where women can't get abortions in some states. Mm. That is the harm that these things right, perpetrate. Because you're, and, and you're I, meddling with people's lives. I would, invite you to, I would invite you to do some homework and look up exactly how much spousal abuse the top of Jehovah's Witness Church has covered up directly. This is a fundamentally broken religion that we're talking about. <laughs> hey, this isn't this isn't it just is like really all, dark. this it, isn't just like, oh, all organized religion is 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 potentially debatable. No, Jehovah's Witness specifically really goes for it in and shittiness. You know what? Yeah. I just remembered something that I, 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 I wanted to bring up that somebody reached out who was an ex Jehovah's witness mm. and they actually uh, agreed with me that, that harmful was a better word than dangerous here. However, I think we're splitting hairs. Right. Their father became a Jehovah's witness and basically completely abandoned and refused to speak to their son who was gay. Wow. Yeah, that's the fucking harm. Yeah, truly. So people like this, you know, in my view, they, I, you know, I, 
I understand that there are like potentially second order consequences that aren't pretty. Like he loses his job and then his family. Oh, what will his family eat? But mm. we have to penalize this behavior. Yeah. It's have and to when, do something. And when, oh, sorry, go ahead. Well, and when the, the listener wrote in and she said that Jehovah's witnesses have some messed up beliefs, but all in all, most of them are good people, just like most people who are involved in organized religions. I mean, that's the reach of a century. That is yeah. such a reach. You sound like you've been brainwashed, um, OP. I'm, I'm curious if you are a Jehovah's Witness or if you know people. Like, I don't know how you can just have a blanket statement that most of them are good people. Well, I, I'm willing to say most people are good people. Maybe that's optimistic white privilege speaking. But to to the to think that oh you're somehow a better person because you're organized in organized religion please honey it's I please I, live in the real world with us it's also <laughs> just a distraction from the actual topic which is the fact that the fundamental core of the faith that we're talking hate. about has hate, hate. in it exactly and it's, it's like hateful. I remember I'd uh, it was when I was in a manager position so I couldn't jump into the conversation but one of the people that worked on my staff was having a conversation about religion with somebody who wasn't religious and she straight up said. Well, honey, if you don't believe in God, why don't you just go around killing everybody all the time? What? And that's when I like I had oh, to. Oh, they love that's that. That's when one. I had to jump in and just be like, "We're not talking about this on the sales floor." Everybody yeah. get back to work. But I was so I wanted to get involved because it's just like I don't think that you realize what you just right. said. So that's the reason why you don't kill people because you, you want to go to heaven. You just yeah. said the only reason you're not going around killing everybody is because you might get punished for it by God. Right. That's the only thing keeping <laughs> your hand off. Off the, on the wheel? Really? Jesus Christ. And I've heard that so many times, too. It's, it's insane. It's wild to me that people tie in morality like they it, and that's what and church that's used. your more like well you church, don't have morals by just like trying to be a good person in the world and caring yeah. about other people oh yeah you don't because you think that homosexuals and people that aren't like you should go to jail um go to hell go to jail go to jail yeah. <laughs> that'd be, that'd be, that'd be, was a crime it would be kind of funny if catholicism <laughs> suddenly came out of like okay okay no hell no hell but we're doing timeouts yeah everybody's getting timeouts for the bad stuff the, yeah I, I, I like in defense of religion, I think it was sort of <laughs> our first stab at like morality and things like this. And, you know, I think that's a pet nozzle bit like sky cake. You know, you had to, they had to tell everyone like, yeah, if you do, if you do kill people, you're going to pay for it later. Cause we didn't have like DNA and investigators, you know, mm. we didn't really have all these technologies. Right. I don't think Karma. Of the, what? Oh, car. The idea yeah. of karma. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I thought well, you were listing that as a technology. I was like, <laughs> okay. Um, at least, at least in the, in the Western world for a long time, uh, church organized religion, all of that. It was just social currency. It was just a way for you to prove to your neighbors for proof, for proof to people in these, in a new environment that you move into, um, people that you do business with that you're on the up and up. We have this shared thing. We're all in agreement that yeah. we behave by these certain rules because we're all in agreement that it is a fundamental truth that if we're good, we get to go to heaven and spend right. eternity with our families. And if we're bad, we go to hell. And that just gave people peace of mind because you had no way of knowing if some Somebody was capable of terrible things that they could probably get away with at that time. Absolutely. For, so mm. it's important to remember that this was basically just a Mexican standoff of culture <laughs> for everybody for a long time. Of like, you believe in the same God as I do, right? We okay? We all believe in the right. same God uh, as uh, okay. No, I believe in many gods. Okay. So. Oh, yeah. everybody put no, their guns on no. him. No. <laughs> no. So yeah. thank you for writing in, and you are gonna get a hot response from me because I grew up around a ton of fucking bigotry, and it is always one hair breath away from somebody doing something stupid. So I'm, I'm really glad that you can live in the confidence that this guy's probably on the up and up, but I've met enough of these people. They have been close enough to me. They had enough hands in raising who I am that I know that once those words are out, once those, those thoughts are in your brain, it's very hard to turn that person back. And these people are capable of some mean fucking shit. So I don't really give people the benefit of the doubt when they've shown me they're a bigot. At that point, it is on them to prove to me that you don't fucking suck. You've you've burned all your social currency with me, and it is not fucking privilege to try to signal to people who might be in danger around this person. And again, I think danger dangerous means capable of being a right. danger. Yes. And I think he qualifies as that. I think anybody who vocalizes thoughts like that out loud to people they Har don't yeah. know. Absolutely harmful. Yeah. No doubt in my mind. Mm -hmm. So thanks for writing in OP, but yeah, um, thanks for writing in. No. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is a fun little request we got. I got to tell you guys about this. So there's a bit of a pizza spat 
happening in Cleveland. Oh, Uh-oh. you don't hear about pizza in Cleveland very yeah, often. Yeah, Ohio Good style. <laughs> so <laughs> things started off rather magical. This couple uh, actually uh, had a found a fun neighborhood activity, cooking the za. And they, what they did was they built like a tremendous pit in their backyard. Mm. And it was a real community affair. People were bringing anchovies and mushrooms. The Clevescene.com writes, quoting a neighbor, there's a lot more people who know each other on the street, and the pizza oven is one reason for that. It's brought people together more than split them up. Except for two people, the Cleve scene writes. Their neighbors, Brooks and Micah Jones, filed a 17-page complaint claiming the fumes from the za are a public nuisance and have caused them significant physical discomfort and emotional distress, purporting that the oven smoke and fumes, visibly white, opaque, and billowing, that's pretty good for a lawyer. Can we give them some credit there? Mm -hmm. Have led to, that's poetry, have led to a range of symptoms, including coughing, sore throat, phlegm, headaches, burning eyes, dizziness, lightheadedness, fogginess, heart palpitations, sore lungs. If you've experienced any of these symptoms, please call me. David David M. Jolts, David. the pizza, the pizza lawyer. Smoke, David M. Jolts. <laughs> smoke odors linger on the Joneses' clothing and hair and on their pet's fur, even. So the dog, the dog smells like pizza. Even, even your pe- you got a pizza dog? Cool, pizza. Okay, cool Honestly, Jolts. Honestly, that's not the worst thing to smell like. They asked them to use a chimney, the defense, and said it'd make the pizza worse. So Here's the kicker, though, guys. It gets interesting. I opened up the court statement and started doing my own little research. Oh. They're not even next door neighbors, which makes you go, fuck you. Their homes are separated by a 40 foot wide other house. It's a pretty big gap. But then you learn that house is actually rarely occupied. The defendant's house is north of the plaintiff, okay? And the pizza house actually has a much smaller house so the pit is like basically right behind the house and that that pit is directly on a direct line where the wind blo- if the wind were blowing south to go into their living room and you see they don't have an air conditioner and they actually claim that they leave the doors and windows open for most of the year seven months so mm. they don't have an air conditioner mm. And I got to say, once I learned that, I was like, this would be pretty frustrating. You got your neighbors making smoke. I don't know how often they're doing the pizza. I feel like if it's once a week, shut the hell up. It shut shut the house up while they're cooking the pizza. There we go. Would be my suggestion. <laughs> and also, it would only be for an evening. It's not like the whole day. Yeah. yeah. I think middle ground is your best solution here. Because I got I got to tell you, I'm with you. I'm with you. This is an annoying situation for to have your house all lousy with the pizza smoke and your dog little Fido's smelling like sausage <laughs> The house is all onions. lousy. I like <laughs> that they're running around saying that. <laughs> lousy in here. Lousy with pizza I smoke. I want pizza now. Um, yeah, yeah, I do too, I actually. Uh, I had it last night and I'm already in the mood it's for more. Pizza. It's oh, I, I'm always in the mood for pizza. That's, in that's heaven, there's like unlimited pizza <laughs> everywhere. It's great. It's like water fountains. Yeah, water. yeah, that's... Uh... <laughs> Don't even, that's, yeah. just, that's actually mostly what you get in heaven. It's kind of disappointing. You get up there and it's like, wait, it's just pizza? Yeah, pizza we everywhere. We just got pizza. I the Jehovah's don't have that, it right, honestly. but nobody does. It's a pizza thing. And everybody's <laughs> here. Everybody. I mean, everybody. Yeah, must like pizza. Osama bin Laden is here. He's he, actually eating Hawaiian style right there. Yeah. He loves it. He's gone crazy for it. He's really excited about it. Like, I uh, like Hawaiian style. Uh, I, knew so you, does I knew you were a Hawaiian uh, style. Yeah. Oh, oh. really? What does that mean? Because there's just something so Shannon about a Hawaiian pizza. There's something so feet up on the back of the chair. Sister's a surfer. No, I don't think it's an insult because I totally understand why Hawaiian pizza is appealing. It makes total sense. Sweet, salty. It all it all tracks for me. I don't personally like it because I'm not crazy about pineapple and juice. The juice and the pineapple when I bite into with the pizza, it throws off the sauce for me. But I get why people mm. like it. So I don't mean it as an insult when I say Hawaiian pizza is oh, really? so Shannon of you. Oh, I think you are. I think I mean that you are very unique. That's so you are Shannon. very you are very so juicy Shannon. and sometimes you are backpedaling now. I am not backpedaling. I, I don't. That. I'm just not surprised to find out you're an advocate for Hawaiian pizza. <laughs> That's all. I never met a pizza I didn't like. Yeah, I don't hate Hawaiian Honestly, either. Me neither. Although like when there's 
like a shit ton of meat on it. It's a little gross. I, for me. I liked meat lovers the when meat I was a kid. Meat lovers is a little insane. I can't. I can't. I can't do meat lovers anymore. When I was a kid and in it's high school, intense. I liked it of just like yeah, carnivore. And yeah. now it's just like oh, I feel like shit after. Little, this. I don't like little Caesar yeah. stock pizza. What's your go to now? Is, two two well, toppings. What's your what's your two tops? Oh, black olive onion, baby. Okay, oh, that's a good one. That, I, I've always been a mushroom gal myself. I love mushrooms. I love a good mushroom. A mushroom and sausage. Mushroom pep for very me. Good. Very pep, good. That's pep actually, that's actually could be a good. dinner choice. There's a deep dish pizza place, and that's their specialty mushroom, mushroom sausage. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Where? It slaps. Here in LA. Yeah. We should go. Oh, Masa. Yeah. So very anyway, uh, on the on the case of the pizza thing, I I think I I think they have a case here, but I do. It doesn't seem like they did a lot of negotiating this or having no. a discussion. And I do feel like the pizza cookers could have done some work and try to re- like maybe put up a wall or just negotiate it, talk this out a little bit. It seems like they were kind of like, "What? Everybody loves it." They brought in yeah. David Brings M. the whole Joel. neighborhood together. <laughs> yeah. That's why. That's why it's pissing them off. Is their house is all full of pizza smoke and everybody else is having fun yeah, at the sure, pizza. But they're invited. They're coming. They, yeah, they should just come. You're, yeah, keep, that, <laughs> keep the house locked up. Don't let your dog get they're all curmudgeons. filled up with pizza smoke. I think that they're a little mad that everybody's having fun at the cool pizza house. It's Dora. Uh, AITA for filing a lawsuit against my pizza making neighbors. I am saying YTA. YTA. Yeah. You shouldn't yeah. have brought David M. Joltz in right out of the gate. That's going nuclear. We don't like that around here. Yeah, he's, nuclear. he's a little intense, that guy. All right, we're just going to do a really fast little sub mini here. Somebody wrote in to say that they, AITA, for not donating to the local food drive. OP, I, I really feel for you. Seems like you're in quite hard times. They feel pressured to donate to a food drive, but they don't have any food themselves and actually regularly take from another drive, another food bank as a family. Um, so no, just, you're good. You're good, right? You're yeah. good. And, so and you some can't. of, and I believe like some of their family members were pressuring them to donate their friends and family. Yeah. I'm like, well, if they, if you need the food, then the food drive is for don't, yeah, don't sweat like that shit. you OP. So much love. Feel free to hit me up on Instagram, Danny Baker Graham. I'll send you some bonus episodes for free. Compliment from Nana. Thank you. She writes, I love the new podcast cover picture on Spotify. Woo-hoo! Sarah will, of course, always be our OG favorite, but I love mm-hmm. your energy with Shannon and Jake, and you make a great funny trio. I look forward to listening to your banter. So happy for you. Get them hot stuff. And then they wrote, Nana, not your grandma. I'm only 25. <laughs> yeah, get us hot stuff. Get us hot get stuff. Us hot stuff. I know, I know get what I know what Nana stuff. meant, but I I'm choosing to interpret it as get yeah, them get hot them. stuff. Yeah, Nana. get us. Get them hot things. Chicken and dumplings came up on the live show. There oh was, yeah. Uh, so a pregnant wife wanted chicken and dumplings, which is apparently a very involved dish. This person had a lot to say. They write, "Hello, I don't even know why I'm writing in about this. <laughs> Always a strong start, but for some reason, I feel like I wanted to tell you guys: chicken and dumplings is a southern chicken and dumplings is a southern dish, and it takes a long time to make because you have to cook the chicken, make gravy, and make the dumplings. Then you have to let it all melt into the dish. Chicken dumplings." are the Chinese food that you guys were saying. This is from the live show. It just seemed like nobody knew the difference. This info doesn't matter, but now you know emoji of a chicken. Was it chicken dumplings or chicken and dumplings? It was I think show. we interpreted and, it as chicken and dumplings. I that's thought it was chicken I, dumplings. I think that's what was meant. I interpreted it as chicken and dumplings. I don't I don't even remember thinking or hearing that we were talking about chicken Chinese dumplings. Chinese food. No, yeah. nobody took it what that way. What did you think, Jake? I thought it was chicken dumplings. I, I, I thought you did? I definitely thought it was chicken dumplings. Chicken oh. dumplings as in the Chinese? Yeah, because pe- oh. everybody was talking to... Is that I what the is that what the crowd was yeah, saying too? I, that was what people were talking about. They were saying it takes two hours to make chicken dumplings, and oh, we had a whole thing. We had a whole thing talking about uh, delivery or takeout, like how easy it is to order chicken dumplings from a Chinese takeout oh, place. Okay. Oh, so we did think it was Chinese. We thought okay. it was. Well, yeah. we didn't. I was. I yeah. I don't. Well, I don't know about food really. I know how to eat it, but. <laughs> anyway, thanks for the comment. Maybe we still yeah, don't thanks know. Thanks for clearing that up because we obviously did need some clarification there. Thank so you. This one's to Danny and Sarah. Um, I think that a lot of people like to go through the back episode, so don't take it personally. No, no worries. I love this group. This podcast got worse ever since Jake and Shane. Just kidding. <laughs> uh, this is the first podcast I ever listened to. Thanks, Sarah. I started listening to the Murder Podcast, which I think they mean not another true crime podcast, Sarah's mm. Pod, which helped me face my fear of police and some of my... <gasps> 
trauma. trauma. I love Sarah calling Danny out on his bullshit and I'm constantly yelling at Danny, <laughs> but I like this podcast so much because you guys always want to get better and try not to be rude. You guys are amazing. Miss you, Sarah. Keep doing amazing things. Love it. I always like That's hearing so people react to old Danny. I'm just like, I love yelling at you. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> All right, we're going to open up on a trigger warning uh, submission here. I thought it was good because it's kind of about alcohol. I thought Shannon and I might have some good comments on this. Um, And our second story of the day will be, would I be the asshole for telling a woman that her husband cheated on her? Shannon's going to read that puppy. Here we go. Trigger warning. Am I the asshole for wanting to confront my abuser from 15 years ago? There's sexual assault in this, but it's not explicit or anything. It's just that it happened. When I was 15, I was sexually assaulted by an older boy at my first ever high school party. This dude was blackout drunk, allegedly, and he didn't go to my school. It ruined my immediate life and caused a lot of mental and physical distress and trauma for me for years to come. But I worked through it in therapy and with my support system. I never saw him again, and in time, I just forgot about him and tucked away the memory as I healed. Fast forward 15 years later, I'm 30. I'm doing good. I have a Facebook, but I don't actively use it. I open it every like four months to check marketplace. Well, I open Facebook for my scroll and the guy is listed under the people you may know. Add a friend list that Facebook makes. I immediately feel this kind of anger come over me and I just blocked him. I hadn't heard his name in over a decade, so Facebook is totally slapping me in the face. Anyways, after a few weeks, I still find myself thinking about it and how I am grappling with messaging him or not. After the assault, I never spoke to him. I didn't press charges and we went to separate schools. I honestly don't even know if he remembers what he did to me or how much of it he remembers or if any of his friends that night told him. I feel like the devil on my shoulder wants to message him and be like, hey, remember me? Fuck you. You did you did this and ruined my life, yada, yada. But I know that's probably a big no-no for my healing. I asked a few of my friends and got mixed answers. If he knows what he did, maybe he got help and is better now. If he doesn't know what he did, am I ruining his life by telling him 15 years later? Is me saying anything just totally inappropriate and irrelevant and just for my own revenge? I love your show and figure maybe you could give me some insight. Hmm. I don't think of revenge from how you're writing this. I don't feel like not revenge. I don't think this is vengeance. No, no. I mean, if I had to say, I would say characterizing it as ruining their life is like understandable. I totally understand. Obviously, you're going to have a lot of angry feelings toward this person. Mm -hmm. Um, That's completely normal. But I I would say that reporting to them what happened, which Mm -hmm. much like you just did, OP, which is like, you did this thing, you know, you assaulted me. And I had to get therapy for years and I'm still in therapy to process this. And I just wanted you to know that you did this. And I wasn't sure if you did know because they told me you were blackout drunk. Mm-hmm. I, I think that's clean. It, I absolutely agree. I, I so too. And a good thing to do. I, I would even go that far. And that's where what it's really going to come down to to me is if this is something that you need to say and you think that this is going to further your journey along in a helpful, positive way. I don't think there's a single thing wrong with this. Mm-hmm. I, I think that you're from how you're writing this, this doesn't seem to be. And even if it was being motivated from a more vindictive angle, that's how you feel. And it's yeah. not really up to anybody to tell you how you feel about this is wrong. This is serious shit. And if you really believe that this is a good step for you and this is going to help you in the long run, you should absolutely do it. And I think you could help this person potentially yeah. too. You know, I, I did. I remember when I would get blackout drunk and have people tell like, for instance, one night I was really mean to a mutual friend of ours, Jake, and I didn't remember it. I had no idea it happened. I was brutally mean to him all night long for hours and hours. Uh-huh. And uh, he was actually a jujitsu champion. And he told me, you're very lucky. I decided not to practice jujitsu on you for you would have been obliterated. Um, and I'm not going to lie. I did not quit drinking, even though that was a wretched thing to do. But a lot of little interactions like that added up and eventually mm-hmm. I did quit drinking. And, you know, this this could be the kind of thing that makes this person realize like, yeah, alcohol is fucked up and I'm fucked up and I did something really bad while I was on it. My fear for OP is that this interaction could be it might go sour. Yeah, we, we don't know what this guy could say. Right. It doesn't we don't know that he has taken action or that he's a reflective person. He might say, fuck you. I didn't do that. That's and, what I was thinking, like her anxiety waiting for a response or and then once she gets a response, if it's really disgusting, that that could do more damage than um, positivity, something to That's acknowledge fear. and be prepared for. Yeah, is you you have every right to you know do what's right for you, 
but it, you the world's unpredictable and people are horribly unpredictable mm-hmm. so we have no idea what kind of he could act like is. very defensively yeah. or tell her that she's lying or mistaken him for someone else and it's it's also there's something so dangerous about the culture that we've created and i don't think that this is an american exclusive i think that this is global but the the past that men specifically get for behavior when they're young and drunk yeah Uh, the alcohol culture that we have globally in terms of consumption is absolutely absurd and it's like this shared boys club unspoken rule of well i did dumb shit when i was drunk and young so i know how it is and it's so fucked up because it just gives men this capacity for they they see it as like a green light for all their behavior when they're drunk between the ages of 18 to 25 or however long it extends yeah and i i feel like granted i've like had to check myself with alcohol growing up but i was never excessive with it when we were in college i i didn't really start drinking until i was 21 Mm -hmm. i would have like i'd hold a beer at a party just because i wasn't i didn't know how i would be there was a lot of alcohol abuse in my family uh, Mm -hmm. through the through the years not all around me growing up but just you know having people in the family tree that had struggled with it um i was always always afraid of what kind of person i might be right when i was on it so i never fucked around and and well and i i mean i was scared i was terrified to take the leap and I, I wish I had been a little bit more uh, comfortable with myself and enjoyed the party years in college a little bit more, but I'm very happy with the experience I had. And I'm proud of the person I was through, through those years. I don't have anything that I'm like, uh, like I have some cringe shit for sure, sure. but there's nothing of there, uh, There's no stories of me acting out of control, especially yeah. because of alcohol. There's mm-hmm. dozens for me and I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sit here and, and sanitize it. You know, I drunk drove, I got into fights with people. I did awful, horrible shit that, uh, you know, I'm ashamed of and, and, and that I, I would gladly apologize. I mean, I would, I would be, uh, I don't know about happy to receive a message like this, but a message that confronted me for something I did that someone was holding onto and they wanted some kind of closure. You know, I, I would be like, look, I, I, you know, I'm sorry. And I, and what mm. I have done and, and that, that's my fear with this person is that obviously I don't drink. So I know, I know that all these interactions I had where people were like, Hey man, you were a fucking asshole and you, you know, you drunk drove like I, God, it's very, and, and I think, I think, and I'm happy you said that too, about this being normalized. Cause that's, that's actually helped me forgive myself a little bit where I'm like, well, yeah, I was acting like a fucking animal and I, I am ashamed, but it was also, I was in a culture where drunk driving is normal. And I still know people in Phoenix who drunk drive. It's- like it's very well, normal. People do it all the time out here. It, it's, it's awful. My friends do it all the time. It's so, and it, it is wild how like how it's almost like a joke to people when they mm. do it, and it's just like it is. It is crazy how we we've just become so accepting of it, and it's entirely based on marketing and how it's mm. like. It's weird to me that we can't see people drinking in alcohol commercials, yet the messaging of alcohol commercials is life will be better when you drink seven of these in a row. Yeah, it's all over the place. It's all over the media. It's a pervasive message that you know. And I think a lot of people's whole identity is alcohol. You know, that's how they have fun. That's their activity it's that their they hobby. have fun with. It's their hobby. You know, mm-hmm. um, that's so true. That was definitely my hobby for a really long long time That's right like all i like to do it's and it's an awful thing so op i think you're zero percent the asshole uh i think that you know if you want to confront them um i think i think it's a good thing it's a powerful thing and it could be something that affects change but you don't know you don't know what they're gonna say and so i just want to brace you for the fact that a i don't think you should engage this individual if they're being defensive or anything like right. that mm-hmm. and but I'm also wondering, even if she does message them and they come back with, um, you know, taking accountability, like, is that even really going to feel good either? I think it would. But I mean, maybe not good. Good might not be the right word, but it would. Would it, it add some closure or something? I try. I, I personally, we've we've alluded to it on the pod before, but I I'm not sure what closure is at this point. I think that mm-hmm. people call closure a lot of different things, and I don't think it would provide closure, but I think it might provide insight. It might provide it might provide room for you to grow because it's like therapy. You're never really done with therapy. It's a complicated yeah. thing. You're delving into the infinite complex web that is your mind. Mm-hmm. So as you find one door, you find another window, and then that leads to another hallway, and that leads to another door. And it's not that it's an endless futile thing, but it's that the more you work on yourself, the more you see there is to work on. Mm -hmm. Not to say that you have something to work on here, but the healing that you're doing is work. Yeah. And maybe this, maybe if he handles this in the best way possible and responds in the best way possible, maybe that speeds up the healing. Maybe it makes the healing hurt less. 
That's that's I, the best guess. I well, have. and I see OP now is as you know, they had this thing happen to them. It, it, it you know, traumatized them and hurt their life a lot. And this person was likely someone that they feared. Right. And, and yeah. exerted this control. And now that they they are having the strength to confront them. And I even, and, and not to, not to, I, I hate to say anything negative about UOP, but just that you would even think that you are an asshole for this, you know, is oh, so I think a little bit it. telling, you know, that, that you uh, are afraid to assert yourself. Right. Mm. And that, you know, so I, I think it's a gutsy thing to do because I, you know, this guy, you don't, we have no idea what, how this guy could respond, but honestly, OP just based on where you're at, I, I actually think this, this would be healing for you, but you've got to be in a place where the outcome and the response is, is not what you're waiting for, you yeah. know? And if, and you've got to ask yourself if you want to have a conversation or a dialogue with this person. Well, this kind of reminds me a little bit of a story that happened with me. It wasn't exactly sexual assault, but, um, when I was like 17, I got like really, really drunk and blacked out at like more like a get together. It okay. wasn't like a huge party, but I was with like my really good friend and it was all of her high school friends. It was like a differing high school. And I like embarrassingly got way too drunk and everyone else was more like chilling. And I like, you know, knocked over the beer pong table and I was just being like a bit of a nuisance. And then I like passed it on the couch and then everybody like wrote on me and marker like head to toe like wrote like like a dick like going into my vagina and like yeah. dick across my forehead and just like shit all over me not poop <laughs> stuff all over me right <laughs> weird if it was all poop we just didn't all we didn't think you meant poop me. we didn't we didn't think that i don't know i i could actually see that being well a actually there story. could have there could also have been um drawings of poop all over right me. yeah okay so they I drew thought. all over you they that's what all i over thought me. and then i didn't realize this but then like I, it must have been a year or so later like this one guy who was a, such a dick like this was over Facebook. We were like Facebook messaging. I wasn't really friends with him or anything. And he told me that he like, cause my legs were kind of spread and I was in really short shorts when I had passed out and he like took a marker and was like writing on my vagina. That's assault. And at the time when he had told me, like I was really young, so I wasn't like, I was like really upset about it, but I was more like embarrassed of myself that I like let myself pass out Holy in that fuck. position. And so I never like really was able to be like, how could you do that? Or, yeah. like, fuck you. That was so fucked up. Yeah. And I think about that like every so often now. And he does pop up on my like Facebook, like who you may know. Yeah. Every now and then. Cause I think I like unfriended him a while ago. And every now and then I, whenever I see that, I'm like, oh, maybe that would like be good Fuck to be that, like, dude. like that was fucked up. That was fucked up. But you know, I, you I don't know funny. that I would even get anything out of that right. is what I'm saying. Like, even if he was like, oh yeah, I'm so sorry. That Doesn't, was fucked up of me. Like, I don't know if I really need to hear any of that. Has it been something that you've had to like work on and think about and heal from, or was it just something that you're sort of like, oh, that was fucking gross? Um, I guess a little bit. It's not like I really like ever talked about it in therapy or anything, mm -hmm. but yeah, definitely that, that whole night in general, like as the years gone on, I was like, oh yeah, that was like really fucked up of them all to do that anyway. Yeah. Like yeah. regardless if you were writing on my vagina and like years later, I was like, I even confronted my friend who was supposed to be like my best friend at the time and was like why did you let them do that like I was at your friend's yeah. high school party I didn't know any of them and, and even she was writing on me too and like that really hurt and so yeah I mean I guess like just over the years been like yeah it was, it was just like not a good night at all so yeah that just sort of made me think about that and I'm her situation's different but yeah, I mean it's it's uh, it's but it's different, but it's also similar. You know, I mean, I thought it was interesting the way you worded that. Though you seem to have some ire toward your friend. You know that they that they weren't more, and I'm sure their excuse would be if they were a good friend, they would say, "I'm sorry," and that was wrong. You know. No, she didn't. I mean, she was. Yeah, she like blamed it on me again for like that I got that drunk. 
Yeah, you got wow. drunk. Therefore, I was forced to mark her all over. <laughs> yeah, you know? I had to do something super shitty and let other people do something super shitty mm-hmm. because you got too drunk. Yeah. The, the reason I wanted to cover this too, and I'm happy we got a lot of this out, is just because it is so normalized. I, I think it's become less so, but like at, you know, at ASU at, at our time, you know, it's like people would get blackout drunk a lot mm. and there was no shame around that. It and was like a, insane. It was like a notch for people to get blackout drunk. I, oh, I yeah. always thought even when I was desensitized to it I always thought it was really dangerous game to play with yeah "Yeah, man I'm getting blacked out like twice a week oh I would go into nights being like I'm blacking out tonight oh I heard that I heard that from a lot of people and and it's normalized and then things like you know covering your friend in marker which is like at best disrespectful and I think in your case assaultive Mm -hmm. you know oh well we were just drunk you know and it's like well you were drunk and committing assault still like you're still responsible you're you're that was you not yeah. nearly the same situation as Shannon, but I did get the marker treatment at my 21st birthday, which was at your old place. Oh, and I will say, like, it wasn't just like, a, oh, you left your shoes on. I did. But I was I again, I had not drank heavily until up until this was the first night I'd ever drunken heavily for sure. And absolutely nobody had my best interest at heart. It was like I got crazy overserved and I get it. We were in college. Everybody was just excited that I was drinking. Yeah, finally, was tw- you were 21. So, right. so everyone wanted to take a shot with you. Right. But it was, it got to a point where it was just like, and I think for me, I was like, wow, that's one of, that's still one of the drunkest I've ever been. And to everybody else, it was just like, oh yeah, Jake's like normal drunk. Cause this is the drunk that we, we get. get. Yeah. But like I, I, I did black out at one point we were in, um, four peaks, the brewery. Yeah. Um, and I, I didn't, I got, the full story from everybody i wasn't an asshole but i was very loud and i was very animated and apparently when the bouncers came to throw me out i didn't i was just like oh i'm sorry guys clearly i need to go and i just like showed (laughs) myself out but as soon as i got back to your place everybody stopped me at the door and said okay jake do you need to throw up do you need to throw up yeah do you need to throw up and i said no i'm fine as soon as i got through the door i threw up and passed out on the couch <laughs> so people wow. shouldn't draw all over each other with markers and obviously shannon's situation is separate from this i'm just talking about totally, it as a practice totally. in general mm-hmm. uh but if you vomit in your friend's house there might be some repercussions for that yeah that's, that's don't mean. vomit in people's house well, is the real thing i'm trying to say it, you know <laughs> in this alcohol culture too it's interesting because like in your story you know and we've all been in that situation where people are pressuring you to drink right you know and then what if you do something crazy fucked up because you're you were pressured to drink and people fed you more shots than you would even normally consume and it's like alcohol creates these blurred lines of like agency and all these things but and that's why I hate it so much, because I'm like, God, there's no other drug really like this where you will act insane and do something you would never, ever do. Well, there are other drugs like that that are common. What, well, what no, other not drug common. makes you act crazy. You I know? mean, steroids, bath salts. Mm. Okay, bath salts. Is Roid good. Rage is I give also. You, I give you bath salts. Roid, Roid Rage, rage is isn't more, real. Roid t- Rage isn't really that real. No, I think Roid Rage is real, well, but it takes time no, to develop. No, it is it is real, but it is used as a misnomer through media to make it seem like if you do steroids once, you're going to flip exactly. out. Exactly. Actually- yeah, I mean, in the end, I, I'm really proud of the fact that, like, there's a listener who uh, who rather kindly has put his Twitter name as Danny Vega Stan account, uh, which I enjoy. <laughs> oh, you love that I shit. Love he, that. he recently tweeted that he's been sober for four months. Whoa. You know, nice. uh, Alcohol free. You know, I, I don't drink is my thing. And yeah. so I'm always like. I think that it's one of those things. It's like fish and water, you know, it's there's bars everywhere. Alcohol is not a drug, according to some system we were taught, you know. Mm. And so anyway, OP, suffice it to say, uh, AITA for wanting to confront my abuser from 15 years ago. It's a massive, massive NTA. And he is. Well, I would say just do whatever you think is going to make you feel better and don't expect anything in return from him. But if you think you'll feel better by talking to him, then go for it. Go for it. Either way, you are not the asshole. Here we go. Would I be the asshole for telling a woman that her husband cheated on her? I found out a few years ago this guy I barely know had cheated on his wife with a one-night stand. I know very few details about it, but I trust the source. Since then, I would occasionally try to sleuth on the internet to find his wife. 
thinking if I found her, then I should tell her. I hadn't been able to find her and I wasn't going to spend money on a background check website to get the info until very recently. Now I need to make a decision. Should I tell her? I'm not looking to do this for drama. Maybe this is why I honestly don't want to tell her. Would my vague information with no supporting facts be the worst choice as the only way she could confirm it is by getting him to admit it, admit to it at this point? What is the least asshole thing to do here? AITA. Now, I've been on record in situations like this before where Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I acknowledge the right thing to do here, ethically, morally, all that. Right thing to do is probably tell her. That's probably the right thing to do. And I've come to this conclusion after we've talked about similar situations in past episodes. However, I'm not getting involved in shit like this. I don't know the I don't know the husband. I don't know you. I'm just not getting involved. I don't I don't want this to be a part of my life. I don't want this to take up. If I don't want this to take up 15 minutes of my life and it could very well take up much more than that. Once you set this wheel in motion, I I, I wouldn't do it. And that, but that's just me personally. I'm not saying it's, it's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. right or wrong. You don't want to get involved in the drama. I do not want to, I, be I don't have any in issue with that. I, I think, I think it's a question of, you know, I, I, I think, we we've bounced on this before where you you don't you don't want to mingle with other people's affairs literally and uh i understand that i respect it i i would not say you're a hero for doing this no. or that you're not a hero for not doing no, it i'm a fucking human i'm just like i'm you literally protecting myself that's I'm, fair i'm seeing i'm seeing a forest fire out from my cave over across the valley and saying oh no, my forest fire i'm in yeah, my cave i mean to to defend that a bit you know this is hearsay like you hurt, you hurt. Exactly. I you trust the source OP, but like, what kind of evidence does the source have? This, this is like a to... game of telephone. Exactly. You have no idea about the facts at all. That said, as someone who has never cheated, if someone thought I had cheated and someone told my SO that I cheated and they confronted me, I would just look them dead in the eye and be like, "Nah, I didn't fucking do that." You know, I, I don't know what to tell you. And that's you. And as we've discussed before, because I brought this up when it was the neighbor situation, right? You right. don't know how fucking loose cannon either one of these well, people yeah, are. I know. You guys well, and also, me that, you yeah. don't know that, like, that your wife would believe you. It, it could Hopefully cause it could would, cause it an could ugly cause rift. A divorce. It could cause, well, it could cause a thunderstorm in a relationship for sure. Definitely Some problems, depending on you know how jealous and and what this is made of. I just don't understand where this woman gets off that she thinks she has any right to get involved with people that she says herself she barely knows she well, doesn't even know the wife I mean, she has a right we all have a right to send a little dm you know she has the right to say to no, say the truth and the truth is i heard from someone i know that this thing happened with your husband and i felt that you should know because i was concerned on your behalf i you know i don't think that's wrong to do to be transparent you know yeah, but she sounds like a a, a loony bin, a loony bin, a loony bin. She's been occasionally trying to sleuth on the internet to find the wife well, for how long? Her. And it does, it, it does. Yeah, well, is that because it was business. important, or is that because she doesn't have anything else going? I know, and on. she goes, "I'm not looking for the drama." Okay, then what are you looking for? If you hadn't for? said that, I wouldn't have assumed it. But since but you now did you, say now it, you bring it up. It's what what I. I think you're looking for some juice. I think you're looking for some juice. I think that you want, I think you want this to be a whole saga yeah. because especially if what I might've missed something, but it sounds like she was saying, I haven't spent money to look her up in a background search until recently. Right. Uh, no, I, I think she, it, the sentence is worded weirdly. It says I hadn't been able to find her. And then there's, Brack, like what is it called? Brackets. Parenthes parentheses. Parentheses. Until ve so I think what it, she's saying is I hadn't been able to find her until very recently in parentheses. And I wasn't going to spend money on a background check website to get the okay. information. It was worded but weirdly because that caught me up too. You were still keeping your feelers out for her. You were still putting some effort into tracking this woman down. Fucking do it at this point. You've already been weird here. You've been weird. If you <laughs> if you like call it yeah. just call it like it is. Whoa. This is a weird thing for you to spend any amount of time on. So now just fucking do it. I don't think it's that weird. I I what? Dan, I guess come I think on. this is strange. This is odd I, behavior. I think it's uncommon. I think that like <laughs> 
if Thank she you. feels like she knows, I, I guess that's my first question, because here's the thing. I do think it's it's kind of shitty and it, it's definitely weird if this is little more than a rumor. If this is just a rumor and you're spreading rumors, I'm like, well, why are you doing that? You know, yeah, she's Depends. calling it vague information with no supporting facts. Did she is- say that? Yes. I honestly don't want to tell her. Would my vague information with no supporting. Yeah, you're right. OK, now there's nothing to defend. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry, OP. I I think that the way you're describing this, this is little, this is little more than, and you should not report rumors. So that's just going to no. hurt someone's feelings. I think you're you just could, bored. Yes, you could literally break up a family over this for what? For what? G- uh, girl code? She's not your friend. Well, there is no girl code because the girl code isn't to report a baseless rumor. Exactly. There's just not enough, OP. You got to have a no case reason, to present. There's no reason, babe. It, that, yeah, I think I got nothing here. I, I think you would be the asshole for reporting a rumor to someone. Definitely. I, I Unless you want to go to the source that you heard it from and like verify the facts or something. And, and then even then I would be like, why are you getting involved? I would you say. You also don't know. They might be in an open relationship or something. Well, but then it would be harmless, you know. Well, still, but I also like, think mind it, your own I think it's the hearsay aspect that bothers me too, right? Because it's like, friend, what is it? It's I found out a few years ago this guy I barely know had cheated on his wife with a one night stand. I trust the source. So was the source the person who had the one night stand? Well, if this is so important to you, mm. then I would talk to the one night stand and be like, why don't you tell? Why don't you tell them? And I don't think they know that's the a test. But, and that's that brings us back to my point that it is so fucking strange that you kept tabs on this situation so that you could reveal the truth in time I'm when you, you finally when track trying, her down. Yeah, you're trying to be this like vigilante for like no reason. You're a vigilante with no evidence. Like you could be Batman, but you have to know that's the criminal. I, imagine <laughs> if Batman was just totally cool with rumors as the only thing he needed to go off of. Yeah, yeah to go like, in. What do you know? People. Yeah, oh, I, uh, I, I heard this guy. I heard this guy uh, cheated on his wife. Man. Where does he live? Uh, fourteen fifty-two, uh, uh, Sunset Boulevard. That's right. enough for me. No, Batman, wait! <laughs> oh shit! That's my address. Fuck. <laughs> Ah, yeah, you guys definitely talked me off on this one. I, I think that this is a little more than rumor spreading. That's yeah. what this sounds Super like. Weird. So okay. strange. I, I think you need to like start playing pickleball, get a set of golf clubs, go to the driving range, like just figure out something to take up some of your time. Snowboarding? Jay? Snowboarding! There we go! Would I be the asshole for telling a woman that her husband cheated on her? I think we all do agree that the title should be, would I be the asshole for spreading a rumor to a woman <laughs> that her husband cheated on her? Yep. Yes, you would, would be. be. Y-T-A. All right, guys. Well, we're going to cover a little pair of situations now. Both of these went viral. Uh, The second one is AITA for wanting my husband to say I am an author. But first, it's AITA for asking my wife to respect my title, a pilot. I need the opinions (laughs) of AV geeks and pilots on a matter involving my wife. I'm serious. My wife and I, five years together, married for two, no kids, have an amazing, happy ship. I can't recall a single time we've ever argued to the point of breakup or divorce. I would hope that you could remember that. Yeah, what? Uh, To the (laughs) point of breakup or divorce? Well, yeah, that would be only one time. Anyway, (laughs) this issue, however, is causing me to reconsider the health of our ship. Since my wife and I have been together, I have worked as a manager for a restaurant chain. I am an extremely passionate aviation enthusiast in my free time. I spent thousands on flight textbooks, sim gear like simulation, and even built my own A330 setup. I have never actually flown a plane or started flight training, but I have considered it for a long time, even though my skills are not a career. I still consider myself as adept or possibly more knowledgeable than the average pilot. That being said, here's the problem. Wife and I invited uh, to one of her male coworkers' house for a barbecue. My wife is a senior software tech for a COVID startup. She's worked there since 2020. A lucky catch after she was laid off. It was my first time meeting many of her now close coworkers due to COVID and working from home. I'd assume she'd talked about it to me before, but as we were cycling through introductions, I was less sure. We make our way down the line to the host of the party, a new male hire she has grown platonically close with. We exchange casual conversation, and Greg asked what I do for a living. My wife chimed in with, he manages a, insert fast food chain, we'll say McDonald's. It certainly comes with some benefits. I'm, I'm assuming she was referring to the free food. In a voice that implied nothing was wrong with what she said. I corrected her and told him that I am a pilot. 
<laughs> my wife knows how insecure I am about my job and how I'd much rather be introduced by my hobby. I've earned the title of pilot through my 500 plus hours on sim and thousands of dollars put into my craft. I think it is disrespectful for her to not acknowledge my skills and training just because I don't have the title of pilot on an overpriced piece of paper. Doesn't mean I'm not a pilot. I laughed it off with Greg, told him under my breath that my wife was often forgetful, which I'm sure he's realized from working with her. He seemed to brush it off casually at this point. I'm fuming, but I don't go much farther than exchanging some nasty glances at my wife for the rest of the night. As we pack wow. into the car to leave, the argument starts. She feels as if I don't deserve my title as a pilot because I'm not professional. I told her she's insensitive to the work I've done and she will never understand what it's like to study so much. She's currently on the couch as I type this. What? AITA for asking to be respected. Were we all reading this like, wait, where is she now? Oh, she's on the couch. She's on the couch. Look at her sitting there while I write this. <laughs> do, you, do you think he meant he, he like made her sleep on the couch for the night? Oh, may maybe. I I don't think I don't know how to read this guy. To be honest with you, he's uh, a nut job. I, this is a Tim Robinson sketch. I can mount some defense here. I did not catch a few subtle details on my first read. Okay, let's hear it, Daniel. So the conversation went down. Greg said to OP, "What do you do for a living?" Mm. And wife chimed in. That's rude. Answered for him. That is rude. He manages a fast food chain. That was rude. Mm. Do you know why she did that? Because she knows that he's gonna. Say she knows <laughs> that if she doesn't get in front of this fucking cringy bazooka that he is about to fire off, this motherfucker is about to say, "I'm, I'm a, a pilot,", pilot. <laughs> <laughs> and she has lived this nightmare so many fucking times, where her husband tells somebody, <laughs> "Oh me, I'm a pilot," and then the person he's talking to very reasonably says, "Oh no way, what kind of planes do yeah, you fly?" What he airline? Says, a330. An A330 in my basement. That's not a plane because I'm not a fucking pilot. I'm a hobbyist. And you know what, man? That's a cool fucking hobby. You could talk your ear off about that hobby to me, but if you introduce yourself as a fucking pilot and then reveal, ah, I'm just messing with you. I have a perfectly normal job. I just like introducing myself oh my as a God. pilot. I'm going to think you're a fucking lunatic. Yes. I'm going to mount a hard counter here. Okay. Oh, here we go. Does someone who do open mics, is that a comedian? Yes. Why? Because they're doing comedy. You know what an open mic is to a pilot? What? Flying a plane. I don't know. It's Fly. not a sim. Flying what kind of plane, Jake? You don't fly a fucking A330 if you're training to fly A330s. I, I think Look, that... Um, I, I Danny, don't think this holds water. If he actually flew a plane... Once. One time. Then you could say he's a pilot. But the, my issue is... Somebody asked him, what do you do for, for a living? For a living, okay. meaning how do you make money? Okay, if, but if, Shannon, if somebody asked me what I do for a living, I don't want to answer the real thing. And that's my right. I don't need to be transparent about my income and how it comes in. Well, so, what do you, what do so, you say? I would Just say, I would curiosity. probably say podcaster. You yeah, know, but you get paid for that. But it doesn't matter. I'm allowed to say whatever I want. It's what I do to live. You, and the idea that it's connected to capital is fucking stupid. I'm I, allowed to say whatever no, but I want. That is what I could say comedian. I is. could say comedian. So I'm not, I'm not required at a party to be a thousand percent transparent with these motherfuckers. Yeah, but you as a podcaster, you do podcast. You, you also actually do, do stand up. Yes, but uh, fly, he does not fly the plane. If you have 500 hours logged into podcast producer but then simulator. You never but then podcast? No, okay, but let's let's get into okay, so then what if they say they're a writer? So you're saying if I write one word, then I'm a writer? No, so that's no. Okay, that would be a professional writer. And the question was specifically, what do you do yes, for a living? Jake, we all guys, know what that means. I'm not Everyone there's no knows way that's money. You can't hinge that no, but you can't hinge this on, first of all, a casual phrase, which is what do you do for a living? Which I think is bullshit, by the way. Yes, but that does what that is what yes, that but, means. Yes, if but you, you are you allowed. Said, you are allowed to answer that as you wish, and your partner should be supportive of you. Yeah, but if you just said, "What do you do?" Then I could say anything. So what? I'm allowed that, to lie to fucking Greg. I don't know fucking Greg. But yeah, now but you're it's, no, it's your coworker. I mean, it's your wife's coworker. So oh, you fuck are him. no, you are no, asking you, your 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 partner to indulge a fantasy at this point. I'm not and asking that's them not to do healthy. shit. I was asked a question, and I had the right to answer it as I please. So so. So you're saying no. that the situation should be handled by him saying, I'm a pilot. And then his wife having to say, I, he's a very enthusiastic 
pilot. Uh, you, you're asking her it to lie to your coworkers. No, she doesn't yes. have to lie. She can simply it not state lying. the truth. No. Yes, it is because no. then the next day at work no, on man. Monday, they'd be like, oh my God, that's so cool. I didn't know. Did he, does he work flight commercial flights? And then yep. she'd have to be like, well, actually he works at the McDonald's, which nothing wrong with no. that. GM, GM of a, of a national chain fast food. That's a cushy fucking job. That's good fucking work. I don't know. I'm really, you think most, good? most, mar cushy? most markets, a GM, not, not cushy. I shouldn't say cushy, cushy, but you're, you're, you're dealing with very serious benefits. Definitely not free food, by the way, Danny, that's like solid ass healthcare. Like if you're in the sure. McDonald's, like chain like that, any, any national chain like that, you're making good living in most markets, not all, you know, coasts and more expensive cities. I'm sure it's tough, but like in a lot of markets, you're killing it. I think my issue is that it's easy to roast OP. Look, he, he's obviously not a pilot. He's not a pilot. He's not a we pilot. We all agree. Any, you're not Except a pilot. OP, who you're is not, a pilot? You're not a pilot unless Wait. you fly a plane. Okay. You were just okay. arguing the other. You're home. arguing for lying. You're saying it's okay to lie to she, strangers. I'm not. No. I, I don't think that's lying, Jake. If somebody asks me at a party, what do you do for a living? And I say snowboarding, that's not fucking lying. I'm allowed to say that. That's how I live. I, I don't no, have to answer. I'm not Danny. being audited by the fucking IRS. <laughs> I'm allowed to say snowboarding. There we go. I found a good example. No. I am allowed. To, yes, I am, if Shannon. You were to, if I were to meet you at a party and I said, what do you do for a living? And you said snowboarding, I would be like, oh, you're a professional snowboarder. And then I would say, no, maybe I'm not. But maybe I don't want to indulge a lie. If he was going And on, then I would be like, okay, I actually don't like this guy. Yeah. Who invited him? Wow. That's but that's Did you invite him? No, this guy just, he lives an apartment over. Him and the scary lady that live next door. Oh, and Dora. Stare, yeah. Uh, that oh, lady. Yeah. He, he he invites himself to the parties and then comes in and tells everybody like last time he was a knight, the time before that he was a professional <laughs> football player, and then he gets really mad at you when you ask a follow up question. Yeah, my <laughs> issue is she chimed in. That's she rude. Wanted to have this interaction, and maybe that would have been the interaction. Maybe you're right, Shannon. Maybe they would have been like, "Oh, you fly professionally for what airline do you fly for?" And then he would have probably I don't know that he would have gone on and on and lied. He might have just avoided the question, and said like, "I like to fly A three thirties." my basement. I may not say that. You know, this but is this, a so now it's just lying. lying. But then no, that but is lying because yes, then fine. you're forcing it's your wife living to in a fantasy world. Man, it's not healthy. To your I agree, it's not healthy. No, I agree. She it's obviously, not, gets this along is with. obviously not a healthy person. I agree with that. <laughs> but I do think it's fucking rude, and I think it's odd that right. If someone says, let's say it's writer, okay, say I'm a writer, okay, what have you written? You know, oh, well, I, I, I write regularly. I, you know, I write regularly. I journal. So you, you know? have to be ready. Like if you are going so to right, live by this code, exactly. you have to be ready for some follow up questions. And sure. it's probably going to make you Exa look a little that's weird. My issue. Yes. That's my issue, Jake. That's my issue. It was his moment to botch, but she stepped in his way and had to had to put out the fact that he works at McDonald's. Dude, this is so what I I answer for my boyfriend sometimes. I don't think it's that rude. It's a, yeah. I rest my case, ladies and gentlemen. The foot on the armrest. You answer. I'm for never him? gonna be able to have a thing. That's a little yeah. rude. You don't think that's that's a little rude, Shannon? No, I don't think it's so. it's ru it is it's rude to answer questions for for partners. That is that yes, is a rude thing to do. Finally. But well, no. I've been with I you on that. I don't think it's rude. And if he's, he answers it for me, sometimes I don't think it's that rude. It's just like you're in the conversation. It's the thing is. Depends on the context. First of all, I, I it think depends on the context. calling this yes. lying is treating like it's a job interview or that you're being audited. It's, it's a conversation. We don't. When I ask someone, what do you do for a living? I'm not like adamantly like, what is your primary source of income? Right? Like, that's not what I'm asking. It's a casual question, and we're going to have a casual interaction because we're at a motherfucking barbecue. I know, but I think if you were to say, um, so what do you do? You could answer anything. But again, here's, you're, you're, here's you're the taking socially it super literally. Here's no, the, but that is think, what people... So that's what? It's what a people, social expectation. It's a, right, I, have, no, I don't disagree that, question, that that's the expectation, but I'm not required to conform hyper-literally to that. So I you don't have to, but people, so again, on, will think you're weird. The end, yes, of, the end weird. of what you're proposing is essentially <laughs> juggalo culture, where you're intentionally <laughs> just living in chaos to freak out the man. And I, I get what you're saying. Yeah, sure, it is your right to lie to strangers when you know what they're asking you and okay here's the socially adept way to handle this situation okay well i pay the bills with a little place called mcdonald's ever heard of it <laughs> the one off i-95 on the gm over there been in the company for about 15 years but you know what really gets me going you put your arm around the shoulder mm -hmm. flight 
and then you can walk him down sure. your hobby. Yeah. And now you're in control of the story because you've got a sick fucking hobby and you shouldn't be ashamed that it's a hobby because you need to get in a fucking plane and do it. You opened up this episode talking about get on the mountain, push I agree. yourself, I agree. get out of the, get yeah, out of your needs, comfort he zone. Needs to actually learn how to fly. This, this guy. dude's living in his comfort zone and it's a fantasy world. At okay. This point. I'm with you there. Look, I don't think this is a healthy person, but I do. I do think that it was rude what she did. It was, and I've been with you on that from the word go, but I understand why she did it because this is going to be just like the fucking holiday party where she, where her sister's new fiance <laughs> met him for the first time. And yeah. she realized that he got three hours into a fucking plane conversation. And this guy thinks he's a real fucking pilot. And the way he's reacting is giving her nasty looks throughout the whole party, the rest of it. And he then was like hurt. making her he put was her hurt. on the Let, couch. Let's change it to writer. Okay. Imagine you're a writer and you've produced some scant amount of writing and you, and you tell, and your answer to this question is that you're a writer. Now, obviously it's less easy to refute, right? We can all write now. Can't we, we can all write instantly. It's easy. Yeah. Simulating writing is writing, right? Mm -hmm. So this guy isn't completely not a pilot. We all agree. He's not, but he isn't completely, he is coming close. And I just think that what she did was mean spirited to him. I agree that it's weird. Not necessarily like you're, we weren't there. We don't know that the way that she answered, she was chimed like, in and set. She said, this conversation will not be about that. It will be about the fact McDonald's is coming to town. I, McDonald's. I do, I do like, think that we are, we are asking somebody who, straight up lives in a fantasy land to tell I us think his that's version mean, of the Jake. I think that's mean actually. And I'm pivoting this to, I think I can get a lot more ground on you guys with artists because you know what it takes to be a comedian or a writer. You have to lie to yourself and tell yourself that it's possible. Right. Because, because that's an art form, not flying a plane. That is a certified well, job. Sure. Yeah. Whoa. And we're, all we're saying is even if he just it, didn't do it for a living, but just flew a plane, like learn sure. how to fly a plane, then you One can time. say you are a pilot. Okay, so you're doubling back then. So no. now you're saying that you can't answer pilot as long as he had flown a plane. That's what right? you've been saying. Yeah, no, we've no, been. You were saying that you have to answer what do you do for a living with how you make your primary income. So you well, are telling me that had he flown a plane, he could say I, pilot. I think, I think I want to. If he did, yeah, that then I think the answer would be much more reasonable to say that. I okay. want to create some clarity There's because some I think Shannon's, I think Shannon's argument has been very concise the entire time. The, the argument being when somebody asks you that question, you know what they're asking. And this is similar to like, we've talked about this before, like medical procedure. We were talked about how mm -hmm. it's like, oh, is this really a medical procedure when you're just spitting in a cup? Right. It is the expectation of the question. Right. We know what what the intent of this question is. So, Danny, you're right. Like you you have every right to tell people what makes you feel alive as yeah. an answer to that. But you do need to give them some context because you're just you're using their expectation of the answer to the question against them to oh, allow you sure. to live in this fantasy world. And I'm sorry, but pilot isn't the same as a comedian or a writer because those are those are occupations, but those can also be hobbies and it's very interchangeable. Pilot, you can be a hobbyist pilot, Thank but you. you have to actually be a pilot and he's not. He's a sim pilot. <laughs> I'm sorry, but this How is, is it any different than the- You can get a license. A writer is someone who releases their writing to the world, right? Well, what if you haven't done that? Can you still be a writer is there a board of is there a board of control that designates no, you already dropped for certification you dropped certification because well, you, know, you admitted you could be a hobbyist pilot no I'm but you need to be crazy. certified you I'm need gonna, to have a pilot's license I'm gonna Danny. do something crazy that's well true. you could you could fly a plane without a pilot's license yeah well, and that's very dangerous and not no it's not, not this is fantasy world guys what I'm gonna do is crazy we've never done this before Shannon read the next situation uh -huh. and we're gonna see if we can tie up these into a nice little bow yes here we go here we go <laughs> All right. AITA for wanting my husband to say I am an author. My husband and I have been together for 15 years. We were talking about another AITA post, the pilot. And it came to me mentioning that I would be proud when he introduced me or talk about me that he says I am a go not I am a government employee, but also an author. To be clear, I am 31. I wrote seven books and six of them are published. I have four publishers in Canada. I sometimes do book fairs and presentations and have a check once a year for each book. Anyway, my husband said that I am not an author because I do not do that for a living and that he would be upset if someone said they were and later on learned it was just a hobby. Am I wrong? 
edit info. My books are fantasy genre for teenagers and young adults. I won one award and was nominated for three other ones. My six published books were published through accredited publishers. They also each have 150 to 400 pages. They were published in French. I get around two to five K a year for them. My first question, if this person is asked, what do you do for a living? And they say an author, mm. is that lying? This person, no, they has are an author. this person has published work that has made money for them. I mean, uh, this not is a, a livable, not a remotely livable amount of money. But no, that doesn't matter. We weren't saying it okay. has to be your main. I'm just, I'm just main. pointing things out. Yeah, but they have, they have flown so a plane. Right. But yeah. let's talk about the fact they've wrote, they've written seven books and six of them are published. So let's cut to when maybe they were 22. Now they're 31. And they had written one book that was unpublished. At that point, then, if somebody said, what do you do for a living? I'm working in a coffee shop, but I'm trying to be a writer. Yeah. No, 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 no. That's not my question, Jake. My question is, is, what do you do for a living? And they say, I am an author. Is that lying? Yeah. It is is if you haven't been published yet. Is it a lying? Is it lying? Why is it a harmful lie or is that an acceptable lie? It is. I think that you're in this situation because you're not talking about something with a certified None board. None of this is harmful. That gives out. I think it, I think that it is harmful to the original, the pilot OP. I think it's harmful to himself for him to live in this. I'm sorry, but people who don't like, who just talk the talk and don't walk the walk, like fuck that dude saying like, oh, I know more than actual pilots. No, you fucking don't. I think I'm upset that we're comparing somebody who did fucking walk the walk and got their work published. Six fucking ta- six books published. That's fucking nuts. That is so hard to do. I, I, and I just feel like we're year, acting like this great. is so obvious and concrete. But look, five grand a year is not, not really a true living. And by the way, someone who flies a Cessna, a little tiny dinky is plane. Is still a pilot because they fly sure, a plane. Sure, yeah. but someone who flies an A330 simulator that is a much more complex aircraft and they would understand how it works and, and I don't give a so fucking shit. So is that a shit. video game? It's like A330 a, is a kind of aircraft. But it's like he's doing he it has like a, it's, a it's not a video game. No, it's not a video game. Thank you. This is a good question. It's not a video game. It's not fun. It's a simulator. Well, clearly it's but, fun. But I mean it's like He well, wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't well, fun. Well, I wouldn't describe it necessarily as fun. I it's complex. But it's I like mean, a, you can't just like sit on in a it. It's a screen. And, it's 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 screens that simulate flight, but I mean when you play Microsoft Flight Simulator, it's literally like throttle up and you can fly. But like when you use a real sim like the fact, the one that he would have, like we're talking about, there's like a pre takeoff sequence. Like you've got to flip all kinds of switches and turn mm. on the engine. I, I'm going to disagree well, with you on this, but I think we have a different. I think we have a different point of view. I don't think video game is demeaning to it. I think in broad umbrella terms, it is one of the most impressive video games you'll ever it's see. It's not a video game. That's well, inaccurate. That's inaccurate because a video game is made to be fun. A simulator is made. Asking, hold is on, it? this is key, Shannon. Mm. A simulator is made to teach you how to fly an aircraft. And in fact, if you fly. Were, what? Then fly. I, I, well, like, you have to get certified. In fact, there's a lot of processes involved to become a pilot. And there are, boom, classes angle, very expensive is he, to become a do pilot. We have any reason, very expensive. Do we have any reason to believe he has any intention of ever even trying to be a real pilot? Just because, the fact that we would ask that I think is interesting because I think this person, look, I look, I think it's unhealthy. I don't think you should go around calling yourself a pilot if you're not a pilot. That said, I do feel like comparing to a writer who is trying to write and has not been published, we wouldn't go, they're not a writer. Cause they go, well, they written. And I'm like, well, this guy has come pretty close to flying. He built the fucking simulator and flying is really expensive. We're talking about thousands and thousands. We're talking about tens of thousands of dollars to become a pilot. I would counter with you on this. Being a pilot has such massive social merit in this, in, in the world. It is such an impressive job to have. People are immediately impressed by pilot. You know what most mm-hmm. people do when they hear you call yourself a writer? This fucking guy. That's most fair. people don't give a That's shit. Good. You're you're at you're you coming at there. it from an there's artist a, there's point a of concomitant, view. There's a concomitant lack of respect that comes with saying right. you're a writer. You yeah. you're coming at it from the creative mindset of like to call yourself a writer, to call yourself a comedian, to call yourself an actor. It is a mock that would of be like somebody that's that's playing operation that says that they're a doctor. I'm a doctor. No, it's not like it's, that. I'm joking. But he stands <laughs> he stands to gain so much in terms of how 
how people perceive him. You're not just lying about what you're doing for a living. You're lying to them about your social status. And I'm not saying that that's right, that we do that with lines of work, but he knows damn well that when people hear pilot, they think Top Gun. Yeah. When people he hear writer, in- they think sad. Right. Because he's, insecure- <laughs> he's insecure about what he does for a living. Yeah. And you shouldn't be, man. If you somehow hear this, like part of the reason why I'm pretty fucking mad at you is you've got a good (laughs) job. You've got a good life and you are fucking into your shit. And if you're cool, with, if you love this, you shouldn't be ashamed that it's a hobby because it's like, no, am I ever, if somebody asked me what I do for a living, am I ever going to tell them I'm a dungeon master? No, I'm not because that is going to like, that paints such an inaccurate picture of what my life is. Yeah. It makes me feel alive. It's something I love doing. It's not an honest answer to the question and it's not a representation representation of who I am, just like how being a pilot isn't a representation of who you are. Right. Like if I were to say that I, um, I do pottery like for a living. No, I don't do that for a living. It's my hobby. But then also to put myself in, in these shoes, cause I'm an actor and, but for the longest time, I never felt really comfortable when people said like, Oh, what do you do for a living saying acting? Because I wasn't making much money or even had any credits anywhere. So I would oftentimes say aspiring actor, but I also do think you can say actor because I was acting you in doing class. It. I was actually doing it, but I've only felt comfortable in the last few years when I've gotten on TV shows And am I making enough, like a bunch of money from it? No, but it's still what I'm, it's still my career and what I'm aspiring to do. I mean, he's not even, he's not doing it. And it's, it's so annoying to meet people who, I don't want to call it stealing valor. That's way too dramatic of a thing. No, yeah, no, that's it though. You have it. That, and that's, that's why this is, this is what I'm looking for here. AITA for asking my wife to respect my title, a pilot. You're not a pilot. She can't respect she the can't title respect you don't something have. something that doesn't exist. And, and you got me, Jake. The title of a pilot is comparable, less so, but very close to a doctor. It, it, it actually is about- A doctor the of the sky. <laughs> Maybe that's a meteorologist. Sure, sure. That's, it's a lot of things to be a doctor of the sky. And But that said, Such I am looking reach. to get from the panel. Okay. I'm looking- for a soft YTA because I do think it was shitty that the wife chimed in Uh, and shut him down publicly. Look, if she has his best interests at heart, why is this the forum where we're going to address the delusional pilot syndrome? Because that's, well, she wasn't trying to address it. She she was was just trying to avoid. She was shitting on him publicly. How is, how is answering the question that he works at a fast food chain as a general manager shitting on him? If you, if they think that that's what's shitting on, then she needs to get a new job. She was disrespecting him. By telling him the truth? She, no, she was disrespecting him because that's his question to answer as he please. And when someone asks you what you do for a living, it does not, it is not a fucking audit and you're allowed to say whatever the fuck you want. I don't care if you have never made a single dollar from acting and you're a community theater actor, you are allowed to answer that question actor because you don't want to answer it with like grocery bagger. Now, okay, so here I do yes, want to- that is again, not a social my sin. point is that I was an actor, though. Well, whatever. You're allowed to say writer, even though you've had I, nothing published. Would it be okay for me to be like, I, I, I'm a pottery gal? I think. Sure, I yeah. For a living. And you said, I'm, I'm a potter. And then, honestly, look, because I... I think fake it till you make it is such a thing with arts, you know, and I yeah, honestly but pilot's not an art, but the thing is it's, it's a skill and it's a skill that has like walls that you have to climb. And I actually do kind of feel for OP because it is a financial thing to climb. It is, That's but here's, true, yeah. so I, I do but just don't say it until you are. it. <laughs> there's so many ways. So here's the thing. One, I don't think we can trust OP's depiction of how his wife said this. He has exactly. disdain for what he does in okay. his own. But no, play it as it lays. James. I am playing it as it lays. And he says, she says, insert name of fast food chain here. Like she told them what your job was. And yeah, that's rude to answer for you. But we are minimizing that this is her fucking job. And a big part of your social standing at your work is your honesty. And if you have to backtrack for your partner, oh, you're losing, you are losing people's concept of you. They're like, why the fuck it? What? Mm-hmm. He's not a pilot. Why is she tell? Why is she acting like he's a pilot? Yeah. She is trying to she, avoid losing standing. She at- doesn't have to act like he's a pilot though. She can just not say anything at all. No, at work parties for, especially for your your significant other, you have to be on your best You're, behavior. I have made that mistake before absolutely. in the past. Let me tell you. If I'm ever at one of Jackie's things, I am 
full, I'm in work mode. I'm in the same mode right. that I'm in when I'm out in the field selling. I am pristine. I am proper. I'm mm-hmm. looking everybody in the eye, shaking hands, exchanging and names full on. All right, to, like, you guys got me. You got me. You're right. It wasn't actually that. You're casual. backing her up. This it, isn't a fucking party for you to tell no. your pilot story again, man. You're right, you're and right. he's a new coworker. It, too. That was a miss on my half, on my behalf. It wasn't a casual question. It wasn't a hundred percent casual. If it was randos at a bar, that would be one thing. Oh yeah. But it was Say her whatever co- the fuck you want to do. Her credibility was at stake. And so she stepped in front of him Mm. to prevent him from lying and embarrassing himself. Because, look, you're at a work party. Everybody's talking about work. That's the only thing people talk about at work parties. That's why they fucking suck. So you know what the expectation is. And you know that he would then go over to your other coworkers and be like, hey, are you hearing that this guy over here is saying he's a pilot? I mean, it's pretty fucking funny. There is some. That's why when I heard this. Like I can see this playing out as a Tim Robinson sketch, like to a T. Yeah, like, I'm a pilot. Yeah. You got- Why did you tell them about McDonald's? Yeah, yeah. I don't like people to know about the McDonald's part. <laughs> I want them to perceive me as a pilot. Yeah. AITA for asking my wife to respect my title. Pilot. We finally landed on a big fat mutual. Why? Ooh, YTA. See, hey. Whew. That was hard work. Put in a double at the we factory did. this week. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we're getting into the author thing. I mean, her ask is a lot more mild. She does get income from her job, and I would be proud when he introduces me or talks about me that he says I'm a government employee, but also an author. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you guys know, based on what I just said, I'm perfectly comfortable if, if my partner wants to say they're an author, that I would back them up, even yeah. if they make zero dollars. It's I, I this one yeah. I am because because writer because comedian one you're like you're basically marking yourself as a court jester to society by <laughs> most people's eyes not my own I think creatives are amazing and I I love all creatives oh yeah not well not all most um but I uh, this is somebody who's been published and getting published is so fucking hard mm-hmm. it's one of the hardest things you could ever do and accredited publishers too and they're long books like yeah. some of them are like four hundred pages I I think Jake really you did you did find this though. It's it's that saying that you're an author or a writer. Uh, I mean, an author does imply that you've written a book, I would say. Yeah. So it's, it means, author, you've, written yeah. It means yeah. you've written you've a book. It means you've written a book. You've flown the plane. Yeah. That, I, I think you're right in that. And, but also that even with an author, it just doesn't invoke the level of certification and right. respect that comes with a doctor. Because most people's hobby is alcohol and they look down on things they don't understand. So when you hit somebody with like, I'm a creative job, mm-hmm. most people don't respect it because they don't understand well, they what also, goes into it. They also probably think that you haven't done anything and right. you're just saying that that's what you do. Yeah, I think I think a reason I enjoy defending OP is because like I do know a lot of comedians who are amazing and mm-hmm. they're struggling and they I don't know that they make even a, a like five grand a year. Some of these people, oh, you know? no, I and really they work don't. so hard. And so I see a lot of that in OP. And I think it's a very difficult thing when we can't make our our reality match our identity and how yeah. we want to identify. You know, I if- don't think there's anything wrong with saying even if I never made any money or was ever. Um, on a show or anything like that to say I'm an actor. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It's just I'm more saying the actual question he asked was you're not answering that correctly if you answer with that because you because he's never done it. The pilot thing with the author thing. She's done it. Yeah. I mean, I I feel like he has done it to an extent uh, considering there are these like, you know, kind of financial barriers in place. But I, I think really what he I think stolen valor is not the right term, but I no, think that's that's what it's the closest with me. word we have. It's, for it's it. stolen certification, which is much less sexy than valor, but that is what it is. And like, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't really even think husband absolutely just needs to respect this because I, I don't think it's even a big ass. She's not even asking. She's just asking for both. She's saying, yeah, she's a government employee, but also an author. It's like, OK, what's the big deal? Yeah. yeah and it, she is an author. I, I think you should respect your partner's identity as much as you can. And like, I don't I don't know, I, I guess to defend Pilot Boy a little bit. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> pilot Boy, fly if, your plane if for he's us. He's toting out his stupid pilot bullshit. Then, yeah, fuck him. But, like, she does need to confront him about this, and they need to level out. Because you're right. It's a delusional fantasy world. And so on initial read, I did take it a little bit as, like, why is she shutting this down here? So It's, uh, I... (laughs) 
I think that part of the reason that it pisses me off is because, dude, you're already cool. You don't need to lie to people to be cool. Like it takes it takes a lot of well, but love. People are insecure, man. I know, I know, and it pains me to see that. But what bothers me is how upset he got at his wife for clearly being in a position where she can't indulge him on this agree, in this agree. moment. And that's where you got me. That's and that's and me. I think the the creative argument's solid, except that creative is such a it's a concept as much as it is like an actual job. Like anybody right. can be creative, but it's like if somebody, you know, uh, let's say I, in, I have a, gr I have a great hobby where I love finding loose trash cans and just filling them up with flammable shit and then lighting it on fire and then putting the fire out. And I go to one of Jackie's <laughs> fancy work things and somebody's like, Oh, so what do you do for a living, Jake? I'm a firefighter. Like it's, yeah, yeah, you're right. yeah, that's <laughs> I've, I've matter, done right? 500 that's, that's, hours of that. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I think my other thing with the, what do you do for a living thing is that it equates value with money. And I, I don't like that. I, which, I, yes, but there's nothing wrong with, I'm musing. I'm not still defending this guy. I'm just okay. musing that generally. Like we. Well, yeah, I agree, but that's just what that term means. Yeah, but I, 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 I yeah. I mean, I, well, I think it's a toxic concept. That's all I'm saying. I have legitimately had daydreams about like how fucking rad would life be if I just was like the GM of like a really fucking killer Shoney's in in New Haven. <laughs> you want to do that in New Haven, Connecticut? Not that I want to do it, but just thinking about like, man, just like really steady paycheck all the time works really predictable. I don't have to take it home with me. Yeah. I got solid managers underneath me like that. That job sounds so I completely understand why somebody would lock into a role like that for 35 years, get that pension and have a nice retirement. Sure. Like, I understand that kind of work and I, and it hurts me to hear people be ashamed of their job regardless of what they're doing because it's all work. But I, I think you got a pretty good gig. And if you clearly have enough finances available to build an entire flight sim in your basement, just get the fucking pilot's license, man. Dude, it's like thousands. It's like tens of thousands. Yeah. Anyway, AITA for wanting my husband to say I'm an author. This one's is a no brainer. It's a big fat. He, well, wait, did he do anything wrong? What did he say? Yeah, well, he said that he... Um Let's see. My husband said that I'm not an author. No, fuck her. Fuck oh, him, big yeah, time. no, that's yeah. not objectively an author. Why? ATA for wanting my husband to say I am an author, NTA, and he absolutely yeah, is. Yeah, no, your fucking book's been published. Suck it, nerd. Yeah, seriously. What the fuck have you done, bitch? Well, oh, shit. Is this guy the manager of a fast food chain that has a flight sim? Yeah, probably. You're not an author. <laughs> You're not an author. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that's the show. It was a wild ride. And uh, please rate, review, subscribe. Join us on Patreon, patreon.com slash AITA pod. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Put 500 hours of something you love into your life today. Bye. I'm a lemur owner, even though I don't have a lemur. In your heart, you believe it. <laughs> <laughs>